This week's episode is brought to you by Tonal. Tonal is a smart at home gym that replaces every machine in the weight room and has personal training programs built in so you'll never have to go to the gym again. And the best part, Tonal has a sleek design and looks like a TV on your wall. There are no bulky weights or racks and unlike other products that are just cardio, with Tonal you get a full body workout with real weight up to 200 pounds of resistance. Tonal coaches can offer you instruction for a variety of workout styles. Full body muscle building and multi-week weight loss programs, high intensity classes, bike and tread specific programs, upper body, lower body, and core specific workouts. Try Tonal, the world's smartest home gym. Get the strongest deal of the season now. Visit www.tonal.com for $250 off your Tonal purchase. That's T O N A L.com. This exclusive deal is only for a limited time, so get your Tonal today. Tonal, be your strongest. Yeah, you know, especially with this year, uh, because, you know, last year I did 21 races, it, especially now more than ever. Say yes to an adventure. Don't start when you're ready. You know, I got that on a pair of uh, Rome Peloton shorts. I look and it says, don't start when you're ready or something like that. And, you know, start now. You know, I think you can plan uh, trips. You can plan adventures. Uh, Even during this crisis that we're the whole world's facing right now. And still do stuff for yourself because that's that's what's going to help people go in and, and really enjoy their lives. It's more than just your output, more than a bike. When you hear your shout out, you know it's all right. Put on your magic pants and let's go. We're cruising into the power zone. Clip in, set yourself free. Come on and take a ride with me. You know what you need to know and what's it all about. Everything you need, it's on the clip out. Welcome to the clip out episode 183. This is Crystal O'Keefe and this is Tom O'Keefe. How's the brave new world in which you find yourself living? Uh, I assume you mean Apple. Yeah, I mean, you're used to the Rona world we live in. (laughs) So I meant the you you've had your MacBook for a while, but to this week you got your iPhone. I, I did in my Apple watch. Okay, so the phone, I think the biggest thing that's not fun is just that like everything has to be re-downloaded because I lived <laughs> on an Android app for so right. long. And when you get it, I mean, I guess Apple's probably the same way, but when you log in to a new phone, it's just like, bloop, here is everything. Yeah. And you have to start all that from scratch. It downloads everything for you on um, whenever you're going Android to Android. And my guess is Apple to Apple does that too. That seems sen- sensible. Yeah. So um, that's been difficult, but not awful. Just, just time consuming. Really nothing's been that hard. Um, I really have enjoyed the Apple Watch more than the phone um, because I've kind of come to the conclusion that Garmin is for like hardcore athletes, people who are exercising all the time, especially triathletes, uh, because a lot of the Garmin's uh, they are waterproof and they right. Apple's waterproof too, but it does lots of measurements with it doesn't matter. The point is, just trust me. And um, the Apple is more for fun. Like you can be an athlete and do all those things. Got a, you got a puppy there. I got a dog crawling up, <laughs> crawling up on my lap. Um, Hi, dog. People on the YouTube channel can see the dog <laughs> wanting my attention. Um, so you can do all of the hardcore workout stuff with the Apple Watch, but you also can have fun with the Apple Watch. Right. Uh, my favorite feature so far is that Minnie Mouse is on the face and I can change her <laughs> dress to match everything I'm wearing every day. And she talks. And you do. Yeah. And, and, and here... Well, I promise you she talks. This is a great commercial for Apple. You were trying to get it to talk, and now it's not. That's really frustrating. Well, it's pro- you know what a bit it is? is huh. Disney knows we're recording a podcast, and they're like, <laughs> you didn't pay for the rights to use Minnie Mouse's voice in your podcast, so we're not going to let it work. That's how, that's how good Apple is. Well, right now I'm annoyed. <laughs> but overall... Until uh, this moment, yeah. you've been you've been enjoying. In in all seriousness, um, the being able to use the Apple Watch with the bike and like it connects instantly, uh, the bike plus. Let me be clear. Um, it's it's really nice because it just it's very simple. It's very right. easy to use, and uh, I've also enjoyed it over on the Tonal because yeah. it works with the Tonal too, and you can get the Apple Music you listen to on Tonal. So, uh, having the Apple Watch has been the bigger 
of the two adjustments, but like all positive things that I've gotten to do. Gotcha. So, um, I, overall, it's been a good experience. It's just getting getting used to everything. Yeah, it's a whole new ecosystem. Then, so you, there's just adjustments. Yeah, because so. you know every, you know how to do everything when you use your phone all the time, right? And now it's like it takes me a lot longer to figure things out, like. Like just sending my own Giphy. I can't do that anymore. <laughs> like I can, but it takes forever for me to go to the right place right, to do you it. Got to stop and think. Yeah. So. Well, uh, so what uh, what do you have in store for people this week? I don't know. I got all distracted with my watch. <laughs> Trying to get your watch to work. Yeah. Well, we're going to talk about a new acquisition for Peloton. We're going to talk about what's going on in the the Japanese, or excuse me, the Taiwanese um, media outlet with the. Peloton manufacturing plants okay. uh, and we're going to talk about some issues that uh, SoulCycle is having and also another lawsuit for Peloton because hey why not sure uh, just all kinds of Peloton stuff awesome well before we get to all that shameless plugs don't forget we're available on Apple Podcasts Spotify Google Podcasts iHeart wherever you find your podcast you can find us while you're there be sure and subscribe so you never miss an episode and if you'd be so kind as to leave a review uh, people who uh, ah, we have a new review awesome let's hear it <laughs> so this is from Katie lives Peloton okay and it says I'm a sucker for a good Peloton ride and a sucker for a good Peloton podcast. This podcast is the highlight of my weekend. Aww. I got my bike about two years ago, and it has been life-changing. Thank you. Aww. So thank you for the nice review. Yes, thank you very much. So also don't forget, you can find us on your interweb delivery device uh, at facebook.com slash the clip out while you're there. Like the page, join the group, and of course, uh, check out our website, theclipout.com sign up for the newsletter which uh, i didn't send this weekend whoops not as easy as i made it look eh (laughs) and who forgot and of course don't forget our youtube channel where you can watch the show in glorious hd now in color i'm just thinking of old time tv shows now in color (laughs) uh at youtube.com slash the clip out so that's it for all that let's uh let's dig in shall we yes breaking news so joining us today from Run, Lift, and Live, it's John Mills. Hey, John, how's it going? I'm doing well. How's it going? It's good. It it's good. good. Yeah. So I guess we should, uh, since we ran the breaking news sweeper, we should use the the uh, the breaking news segment. Oh, that's that's a good idea. That seems like the best way to handle <laughs> yeah, that. Yeah. Usually, if you like play a card like breaking news, you should then have some breaking news right. to follow that up. Break news. So oh, okay. like this is this is pretty much hot off the presses because because John like I was driving home and you like dropped this in in the bucket. You <laughs> yeah yeah I, I just happened to uh, run across it. Um, I don't know anything about this news outlet. I just noticed that within it. They referenced that a company called PeerFit, which I guess is like some form of um, a corporate wellness platform. Like they they present, it seems like they present like local workouts or um, instructors and or um, online based instruction. And, and you can look for where you can get to those in your area or you could sign up for classes that are virtual online through their platform and they tend to sell their offering to insurance companies and and, and corporations and so the article suggests that it looks like they've been acquired by peloton um it states that they've had some 30 employees that at one point you know were listed on linkedin as being employees of PeerFit, but now as of late are listed at on linkedin as being employees of peloton So it's nothing that's been announced. It just looks like they've did some research and have assumed it. Also, I checked uh, Crunchbase and it says that that company is worth about 50 million. And the article states that Peloton recently had an SEC filing where they disclosed that they had just spent some 74 million on some type of technology acquisition or intellectual property acquisition hmm. so it, it you put these things together that's what it sounds like they just acquired this company so any initial thoughts on what they would be doing with this company i don't know it throws me a little bit right because when you go look at the, their site again you can type it you go to the site and it you know checks your location and then it goes okay in our network 
like as if you were looking for a doctor, right? Right. In, 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 in your network, your area, here are all the providers that you could, you know, take their class. If, and you can sign up right from within their platform. And here you can sign up for these virtual classes as well. And my mind keeps thinking, well, if, if Peloton acquired that, you'd think they would just want their classes, not all these hundreds and hundreds of classes from all these various providers across the country. It, like, so I don't know how, I don't know how they're going to use that. I, so I don't, I'm not sure. Where my mind goes, and I am completely guessing, but my mind can't help but wonder from a human resources standpoint, if they're going to use this to leverage ways for uh, companies to be able to uh, use Peloton to write off insurance, like like incentivize like, their uh, their HR departments or their benefit programs to get people to use their Peloton, whether it's use the app or buy a bike or and and somehow this technology allows them to like link it to what they're already doing, opening it up to more people. Thereby, in, and this is all in my own head, they could even further reach their democratization of fitness goals because right. because now they're getting people are going to be able to get reimbursed in some capacity right. or get if, a discount or whatever Yeah, like oh if you have the peloton app and you use it five times a month then the company will credit you half of that back towards your off of your cost of benefits yeah that you're chipping in or something you know that's where my you mind know, goes my mind tells me it's something that's probably um really creative and probably bigger than my mind can process. Right. <laughs> probably That's the same bet. Like, That's the I'm same going, bet. I'm asking people in my side. I'm like, should I be excited? I don't know. Should I be excited? <laughs> like, right. And probably a month or two from now, we're going to go like, yeah, it was an exciting thing. I don't know. <laughs> well, when they finally announce it, then, then we right. can be excited. For now, right. we'll be cautiously optimistic. <laughs> right, right. That's what I mean. Right. And then also uh, you had some, uh, some news out of Taiwan. Yeah, tell us what's going over what's going on going on there? in Taiwan. Yeah, see, that's how exciting my life is. <laughs> I'm just looking at Taiwanese news articles. That's you know what I mean. Like when you've been married 32 years, you, you know it's you know it's bad when when you go to watch something on YouTube and all yeah. the ads, all the pre-roll ads are in Mandarin because because you've been searching. Yeah, that's a good point. That's a good point. <laughs> And right. Tom knows that because because of his it, job, he's always looking up weird rock bands. Yeah, like I was doing <laughs> I was doing a, a a Spanish language show one time, and so I was I was looking up all the bands that were on it. And they were they were all like you know mariachi style bands, and it was like right. for a month, all my ads in, on YouTube were in Spanish. Yeah, and to be clear, there's nothing wrong with that. It's just that if it's you just, actually like to watch it for the it, next you know suggested yeah. viewing, it really right, messes right. with it's your just, suggested I don't viewing. Speak Spanish. <laughs> Right. So <laughs> it was wasted. Yeah. That. yeah, that's happened to me with the echelon stuff. I started getting a million uh. echelon stuff. That happened to me. But anyway, so so th this Taiwanese news article on uh, Money DJ, the, the story was about Rexon. It, it's actually about one of Peloton's uh, producers. OK, yeah, manufacturers. And the story was about, you know, their earnings and, you know, they, they, they reside in, in Taiwan. So, of course, they're reporting on that. But in it, you can kind of get some inklings of what's happening with Peloton because Peloton is one of Rexon's major customers, one of their primary customers. They have others. Like Rexon also makes some of the Nordic track material um, bikes, and they also make <laughs> uh, power tools and a bunch of other stuff. But their primary customer is Peloton. And in it, the article, they indicate a few things. First, they talk about Peloton and the Mactonic Center opening up in December next month. And we, we all knew that. Right, they right. talk about how Rexon went to two shifts for producing the bikes. And I think that's the 24-hour kind of production. So we kind of knew that. But then they mentioned that Oh, and by the way, Rexon it has a, a, a manufacturing facility that's opening up in fourth quarter of 2021. I don't think I knew that. Yeah, that's that sounds like new information. I, I don't recall hearing that on any of the call, the earnings calls or anything. Right. Yeah. So, so. they're you know, it was just another element of where Peloton may be able to, to uh, get bikes and treadmills in more mass because they're. Uh, Rexon is increasing their manufacturing capacity and and also points to even higher demand than what we were guessing, you know, because the last earnings call obviously was for the three months prior. So. Right. So like it continues. Yeah. I think that it that's continues. a signal that that continues. Right. Absolutely. <laughs>
Checking out the competition. So, uh, this is just gossipy. It is. Right? It just, I mean, it's just... It's even. It's not even Peloton. It's Peloton adjacent. But, uh, but it's just too fascinating to not talk about. Soul Cycle has uh, found itself in the news yet again, again yet again, and yet oh again, my. not oh. in a good way. Soul cycle, soul cycle. What is happening over there? Yes. I don't know. It is crazy at Soul Cycle. I oh. mean, and it's been crazy there for, I mean, for at least the last year and a half. Yeah, yeah. Crazy. So you kind of posted about the timeline, uh, but but like this started last year, so it all started with first. What was the first thing that kind of kicked it all off? I think the first thing was their major. One of their the majority owners had that dinner to do a <gasps> yes, fundraiser for yes, Trump yes. in late 2019. And, and yes. it, was like, it was like really expensive per plate. And it was at um, his mansion in the Hamptons or something. And no one said anything about it until like, I guess some soul cycle folks got upset about it and all of a sudden it hit news that you know why why is he raising money for trump and they there was a thought that that was counter to the the, 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 the beliefs, messaging that soul cycle kind of pushes out. right yeah. right so that became a big deal and you remember at the time it hurt them because they were about to announce their their at home bike yes, yeah. yes. and they had to delay the whole thing because they had issues with funding after that all broke. Right. Yes. <laughs> so that was the first thing. Right. Then you cut into early 2020, all of a sudden, just out of the blue, a bunch of soul cycle instructors just started quitting on Instagram. And it was like it was all about like the the lack of diversity and how they would say that they were diverse and inclusive, but really behind the scenes, they weren't being treated very well, if I remember correctly. That was what they were stating in as they walked out the door right. with their Instagram post. Yes. They were like, they, OK, their messaging is this one thing. They do this fundraiser thing, which was against their messaging. And now they're treating us a certain way. And that's against what they're saying in their advertisement. So we can't be this hypocritical anymore. We're leaving. Right. Right. So so a bunch of instructors left. Then we heard about uh, <laughs> the CEO Going on a spending spree. Going on a spending That's spree right. on company money, buying handbags. <laughs> right? Yes. Okay. Then, then all of a sudden we heard that she was she was fired. Yeah. Or that. Right. <laughs> she should have been. Right, right. But it took months and she was fired. Then we heard after she was fired <laughs> that Soul Cycle had a, a suit against them for a discrimination or something from an employee that was had was pregnant. That's right. And she claimed that she was fired because she said she's pregnant. That's right. I had right. forgotten that one. There's right. a lot to keep up with. <laughs> right, it's a lot to keep up. It's like a whole soap opera. Right. Then we found out that that same CEO that got fired told a male employee that wanted to go on paternity leave that paternity leave is for pussies. Yes. <laughs> yes. Right. Right. Then we heard about that. This is just the latest story. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's just been on and on. I mean, it does not stop. They do not fail to give you some great entertainment. So so, so this one is like all these these instructors. Well, I'm sorry. You say it in your words because you cracked me up with your post. So your <laughs> words. <laughs> well, it's, it, it's, it's incredible because now. This article, the Business Insider article is saying now they've got complaints from in, employees and riders that the, these there's a, this, a host of instructors are uh, fat shaming. And what was the other term? Uh, like like um, whenever you come on to somebody and it's not welcome. Um, right. Uh, what's the word? I don't know. I don't want to use the, right, the wrong yeah. terminology. Like, yeah. like at work, you know, whenever you're... Sexual harassment? Yes. Okay. Yeah, like, Harassing them. Yeah, right. because one of these instructors showed up at a rider's home. Whoa. That's... Well, yeah, well, that, I guess it sounds like the, the rider lived at a dorm. And that's right. That's right. Was, was in college or something. Allegedly. And the instructor showed up at the dorm. That makes yeah. it. That's that's worse. Oh, yeah, it gets worse like, because because then he wanted a certain activity and she sure. declined. And then he said, 
uh, he he suggested an alternative activity that ooh, was. Ooh, yeah. <laughs> you're using, see, I've used all the wrong words, got myself all in trouble. See, you're, you're stating it much more eloquently. <laughs> um, so uh, so so one you would call the full Monty. That okay. was the first okay. suggestion. And the second was he didn't have to remove any clothing, but it was all about him. OK. And uh, and she said no. And he said, that's the least you can do after Oof. all I've done for you. I mean, you can't make well, this shit up. Wow. The article is like these these instructors are like these pseudo celebrities, like it calls them. And they're they're basically saying it has just gone way all into their head. Clearly, I mean, right? if any of that is true, that is if any of it is true. Way one yeah. of them, one of them, uh, one of the instructors, they claimed that whenever she had classes, she would fat shame the people at the front desk if they had people working that day to introduce her riders that were not in shape. She would fat shame them and complain to the company that you got to put people up there that are, you know are in shape before to introduce people into my class wow it's right. funny that they think they're celebrities because i was looking like at the picture that we have up which i'm assuming this is a picture of of, of soul cycle instructors <laughs> and and all i can think of it's like you know when there's like a popular movie and then they make a sequel but the sequel was made just for dvds <laughs> right right like this looks like that cast that's like <laughs> Like it looks like if someone made a straight to DVD sequel for Peloton, this is who would they would cast as the instructors. <laughs> you know, I was talking to Erica about this, right? Like, so back in the the early nineties, Erica watched a certain set of soap operas on one station, and my grandmother at the time, who was alive at the time, she's long past, but at the time, she watched a set of soap operas on a different station. And so, if my grandmother came to our house, she would look at. Erica soap operas and she was like that looks so fake <laughs> at my grandmother's house and she'd be like that is just so fake that's so wrong like it makes me wonder like to the soul cycle rider the these these instructors probably look like the real deal do, do, right. do that's the instructors what they're used like, to yeah that's exactly right it's like when you watch the local news in a different city <laughs> yeah you're like who right. are these jokers yeah right. <laughs> but you know what it also made me think reading all this stuff and reading all of how this had just Sounds like it, it just just gone to their head. It made me think. I wonder if that's something that is broader across the industry. Like, are there instructors at Peloton maybe, or at others, where this is just such? There are such uh, so many people that are in admiration that it's just inevitable that it kind of gets to. Well, I mean, we ego. we. We have seen that, right? Like, I mean, the Oliver Lee story, I think, can be classified under that umbrella. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Right. You know? And so, yeah. I mean, I, th I feel like overall, we we haven't seen as much of it at Peloton or well, they've done a better job of kind of keeping it under wraps. Right. But I, I tend to think it's the first one, which is they've it's just there hasn't been as much of it. I would it's agree there hasn't been as much of it. But I also would say that um, sometimes when we wonder as as home writers about changes that are made to the instructor lineup, maybe Maybe yeah, there's I mean, things that there's reasons <laughs> like maybe there's reasons that those things happened. So they never got to that point. Like, right, you right. know what I'm saying? Totally. Yeah. And so. Right. So, I mean, maybe we need to give Peloton a little more credit for keeping things in check over there instead yeah, totally. of being so upset. And we're not trying to cast any aspersions on anyone who's left the company. We're just saying that, like, sometimes when you see these changes and you're just like, how could they? You don't always know. We don't know what happened behind right. the scenes in good or bad. So it's like, I mean, it, it could be getting to the point where. Maybe there's it's just not a good fit anymore. Yeah. Right. So if next right. week you tune in and it's just Crystal and John Mills, <laughs> we'll be like, uh, you, you know, Tom, you know, I did something. <laughs> I did something very, very bad. <laughs> On the but other yeah, hand, so if you tune in next week and it's just me and John Mills, <laughs> <laughs> that would tell you that everybody got really mad at me making the assumption, me making the connection that potentially some of the instructors might have gotten a little out of hand that left. <laughs> so I mean, I mean, it's got to get to your head. I mean, yeah, how can totally. it not? All the adulation and all the admiration in my mind. Just, I think Peloton has just hired some really great people Absolutely. and they've got a really great structure because SoulCycle 
I mean, they don't have nearly the level of, of uh, popularity, I would think, of this Peloton structures or the advertising that they get of their, right. their people. It's not as large. So my mind just think that's got that's got to be a something they have to kind of manage to. Well, and I think that kind of is one of those top down things, which really is what I was alluding to that, like when when there's when there's things that happen behind the scenes and we don't understand something just suddenly changes in Peloton world. There might be reasons, not necessarily that somebody even right. did anything bad, but that right. they're making sure nothing bad does happen. Yeah. And right. like and I, I think over on Soul Cycles world, there was no reining it in. Yeah, it was right. just like whatever. And I think also they're not under the microscope in the same way the peloton that's a good point and so it was probably easier to just be like well you know i mean he clocked out you know peloton might have done some good in that way too because maybe maybe because peloton has skyrocketed to being so visible that might have been the impetus to have some of these soul instructor soul cycle instructors start saying things because maybe maybe they were like you know hey there's there's other companies that don't allow this kind of thing this is right. not normal like totally. we thought it was. Yeah. So I'm waiting for the next episode of As Soul Cycle. Stay turns. tuned because right crazy. here, we'll, we're going to report on it when it happens. <laughs> <laughs> well, awesome. Well, thank you so much for sharing all that with us. Uh, until next week, where can people find you? Oh, they can find me on Facebook um, at my Run, Lift and Live page or my Run, Lift and Live group. They can find me on Instagram, Run, Lift and Live or at runliftandlive.com. Awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Talk to you later. Bye. So there was another uh, volley (laughs) in the (laughs) ever increasing volleys of battles between Peloton and and Nordatrack. Yeah. Talk about uh, (laughs) soap opera. Yeah. So Uh, (laughs) Peloton uh, filed another complaint under under seal in federal court against Nordatrack as part of the the patent. Lawsuit? Yeah, yeah. And so, so first they filed a, a lawsuit against Nordic Track several months ago, saying, "Hey, you guys copied off of us, basically, right?" In, in layman's terms. And then Nordic Track said, "Hey, you guys used our stuff because you have the auto follow and swivel screen, so now it's your turn, right?" And now Peloton is like, "Yeah, we're not done here." And so supposedly they have Peloton has proof, or they're it looks like they have proof. They're alleging they have proof right. uh, that um, Nordic Track actually was able to steal some of their trade secrets or attempted to steal some of their trade secrets for their advertising plans. Yeah. By, by using the same ad agency, right? Or- yeah. From the, what it looks like. And a lot of this, like it's under seal. And, and uh, they said that then that within seven days, you'll see a redacted version of this complaint, but that, uh, that Nordatrack's parent company reached out, utilized its advertising agency to try and get uh, copies of Peloton's, advertising campaign so they could see exactly where they were i'm assuming i know if i was doing this as a marketer i'd want to know where they were advertising and what they were spending and what they were paying those are two different things they sound like they're not the same no no that makes sense but it's like like i want to know overall what they're spending but also what price rates they're getting to see if maybe i'm paying too much you know and so that's uh yeah that's a little that's a little sleazy so if it's if it's true a whole lot of if it's true happening today he said in case one of Nordic Track's attorneys <laughs> stumbles across this podcast so but uh, but yeah it's just an interesting uh, an interesting step in that process it is heating up uh, agreed agreed this is going to be very interesting to watch it play out new content Peloton has partnered up with Metallica, or as my mother liked to call them, Metallica. No, she did not. No, she didn't. (laughs) She did once say the Led Zeppelin. Okay, fair enough. And she meant it total was not being ironic in any way, shape, or form. I do not know where my sense of humor came from. It was not her. (laughs) Well, I, for one, am very excited about this Metallica ride. Yeah. I am ready to ride right after this this is done so we need to get it moving uh, <laughs> but um tonight is going to be so wednesday 11 18 uh kindle is having a live ride and uh then on 
Gosh, there's a whole bunch. Andy's doing a full strength on Tuesday. Dennis Morton's doing power yoga. That's going to be fascinating. Power yoga to Metallica. Metallica. Now, power yoga, you move a lot faster than the traditional yoga. Gotcha. And then Olivia Amato is doing a boot camp on Thursday the 19th. And Eric Yeager is doing a bike class on Monday. So all kinds of great Peloton Metallica classes. And then while we're in the world of Peloton and music, they are teaming up with Spotify for their hot country playlist, which I am also super excited <laughs> about. Uh, this is a, this is a playlist that like you've listened to it many times. You you like this playlist. Yeah, the hot country is. And it's a great way since I book a lot of country acts back yeah. when they see for our younger listeners. There used to be this thing called live music. <laughs> and, uh, and hopefully there will be again. Yes. Someday. But uh, but yeah, so as, as someone who isn't a country fan by nature, it was a good way for me. To just kind of stay up to date on country music, so I would listen to the Hot Country playlist quite a bit. Yeah, well, it's it's a it's a good playlist, and I'm excited about it. There's going to be a flow with Ross on on the 19th, a run with Selena on the 19th at 10:30 a.m. Eastern. I want to point that out because uh, it will have already happened by the time this airs. But there was an error whenever they posted it on um, Instagram; they used ah. the wrong date and time. So hopefully, people saw that. And then uh, Hannah Corbin is doing a live ride on. Uh, 1120 at 7 30 p.m. Eastern lots of good stuff and then you know we've seen lots of chatter online over the last week what about the turkey burn I know calm down and we finally have some insight as to what's going on there yes are you bringing it up I am calm down <laughs> speaking of calming down I want to make sure I have time to get on this ride welcome to gratitude week welcome to gratitude week indeed so uh there's there's you know this all started do you remember whenever I first the had pilgrims? my when I the the gratitude at Peloton specifically oh, okay. all started with the original turkey burn ride yes do you remember sleeping through it I do remember sleeping through it our first year on the road while boy, while I had a peloton yeah we were at, you pulled it up on your tablet and uh, and I fell asleep on the bed while you were watching the turkey burn yes yes uh, and uh, so this week it's gonna be an entire week of classes there's gonna start with Monday through Wednesday is going to be uh, each day we'll have a gratitude class 10 minute long 10 minutes long and then when we get to Thursday Things get crazy. There's going to be two on-demand turkey trots. Now, this is the first time Peloton has had a turkey trot. So you might be familiar that a lot of um, a lot of cities have a turkey trot every right. year. And it's usually a 3K, I mean a 5K, three miles. And um, so this is Peloton's, this is their contribution to that. Okay. And you can... Everybody in your group can start it at the same time. You can do this social distancing. This is something you can hang out with people and do, but like in a very safe way. Or you can take it on your tread, whatever you want to do. But it's on demand. It's got an out and back. So they're going to they're gonna cue you when to head back to your house or your starting okay. point. Um, so there's, uh, there's going to be a 30 minute and there's going to be a 45 minute. The 30 minute is with Maddie and the 45 minute is with Matt Wilpers. Um, and then on Thursday, there's going to be at 8 a.m. the first turkey burn ride. Because there's so many that there's so many people, we got to split it up. Right. Alex is doing the first one. So 45 minutes at 8 a.m. Eastern. And then there's going to be, again, for the first fi- time ever, Family Fit Live with Jess Sims. So there's going to be a class that everybody in the family can take, which is great yeah. since the family's together. Totally. And then the second Turkey Burn ride will be at 11 a.m. Eastern with Robin. And then uh, there's going to be for, you know, after you've eaten... You want to slow down. Then you get to do your flow and let go with a Didi. And, and then there's a gratitude meditation at this, to round out the day. And on Friday, there's going to be another new series uh, called Bring the Heat. So they've never done this before. So there's going to be a series of bike boot camps, power yoga, uh, a run with Bex. Uh, there's going to be a ride with Emma. And then um, hit cardio with Adrian, which I want to point out, 30 minutes and it's live. Uh, so a lot of people don't get to take those hit cardios live. So make sure that you take note of that and they see it. Sh- they should have done a Metallica ride that day. It could have been a fade to Black Friday. <laughs> it's true. I guess... They felt like that was the week before. (laughs) And then uh, Saturday, you get to do a uh, Saturday 60 with Jess Sims, another boot camp. And then Sundays with love on Sunday to round out the whole week. So you got all sorts of Thanksgiving stuff. Dial it down. (laughs) People need to settle down. Peloton will get there. (laughs) Getting the psychological edge with Dr. Jen. 
Joining us today via the magic of Zoom Tube is Dr. Jen Mann, licensed marriage, family, and child therapist and sports psychology consultant. You may know her from VH1's Couples Therapy with Dr. Jen or VH1's Family Therapy with Dr. Jen, her long running radio show, The Dr. Jen Show. She's written four best selling books, including The Relationship Fix, Dr. Jen's Six Step Guide to Improving Communication, Connection, and Intimacy. Dr. Jen, hi. Hey. Hello. So uh, I guess we'll just jump right in. We sure. were going to talk about uh, turning point classes, like a class that you took that just kind of changed cha- your mindset, changed your outlook. I love these kind of turning point moments because I think they very much shape us as athletes. And I think a lot of the time people don't think of themselves as athletes, you know, that especially when there are people like, you know, Robin doing a hundred mile and ultra marathons and things like that. But if you're getting on that tread, if you're getting on that bike, if you're getting on that mat, you are an athlete. And uh, there are classes that we take. Like I know for me, I did a big turning point class for me was I did a 45 minute hills run with Maddie. And it was one of those things that I was like, I could never do a 45 minute hills run. And then for whatever reason, maybe I was seduced by the good music selection or just (laughs) his charm and how adorable he is. But I was like, I'm just doing it. And it was one of those things that was a turning point for me because all of a sudden I went, wow, I could do that hills class. I can do anything. And then it made me feel like, you know what? I can stretch that. I would see a class and be like, I would normally be intimidated by this, but I'm going to do it. And what it really speaks to and, and, as a sports psychology consultant, our mental state, how we approach our workouts, how we think of ourselves as athletes is a huge, huge factor in how well we do and how we progress. And it's important to always check in with ourselves. Is something holding me back mentally or physically? Like I know a lot of the time on my long run day, like I'll be running and I'll be like, oh, I don't know if I can go, how do I do this? And I do a scan and I kind of go, okay, is it my endurance? Is it my strength? Is it my mind? And what I found is now that I have been doing Peloton for as long as I have and doing as much cardio as I have, 95% of the time, at least it's my mind over my body where I'm just like, oh, I'm just mentally tired, like, or I'm just tired of doing this. And what I have to do is really kind of re-energize and kind of check in with myself. And I think that that's really important. And it's important that we use these kind of turning point classes to challenge ourselves, to help us to grow, and also to kind of build our self-esteem as athletes. That's really interesting because, um, you know, whenever I, I heard the phrase turning point class, I was kind of thinking of that it had to be like some momentous occasion, you know, like you'd reached yeah. a certain milestone or right. you got a PR or something like that. But but I guess really it could be as simple as a person who they've never taken a live class. They're scared to. And then yep. they take a live class or or perhaps it's a person who's they've only taken they've only taken 20 minute classes be, and they're like all beginner and they're not they're not sure they can handle a, a real class. And I put that in quotes because right. I don't yeah. I consider all classes real classes. I guess those can be, too. Absolutely. You know, it's funny. I have a, a girlfriend in D.C. who we started doing um, once a week. We do abs and a strength class and a foam rolling or stretch class together and we do it obviously from afar and she is pretty she's very new to peloton and she is someone who is does not have a big athletic background and she had kind of asked me like well, what do you do on each of the different days and i sent her my schedule and then i was like you know 10 minute core on this day and you know 10 minutes of glutes and legs on this day and 30 minutes of cardio and this and that and she's like, okay i'm going to join you on this day and she's like but i don't think i can do a 10 minute core class. And I, and I said to her, I said, yeah, you can. I was like, <laughs> you don't have to do it exactly like Olivia is doing it, but you absolutely can. And you can modify as you need and you can take a rest if you need. And we're now doing it every week. And she now knows she can do it because Aww. she pushed herself. And for her, that was the turning point where she said like, oh, I can't do a 10 minute class. And then she did it with me and then was like, oh, wow, well, I can do 10 minute classes. And what she's found is that now 
she is doing 10 minutes of core on her own. She's doing 10 minutes of arms on her own. She's doing 10 minutes of glutes on that. It kind of helped her to expand to do that in all in all areas. I love that. I love that. Story. Is, yeah, it is it's so inspiring. You know, people get so it, it's they get so scared to try something new. I, I think that focused on the negative. <clears throat> I feel called out. Yeah. <laughs> Good. That's because I called you out. Yeah, well, I was actually just about to call out Tom and ask Tom. If so if until next going, week. Me and my best friend on on Thursdays or Fridays to do a little core with us. <laughs> so there. Open vacation, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> It's good to know it's out there. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> so uh, on that note, yeah. until next time, where can we find you? <laughs> you know, anytime I want Tom to rap, all I got to do is say, yep. Tom, maybe you should hop on a Peloton. Maybe we should do that. <laughs> Just five I, minutes, Tom plays. Up, oh, we gotta go. Where can people find you? <laughs> she's gonna start ending her sessions like that she, with, with exactly. clients. She's be like, instead of being like, "Well, I guess that brings us to a close." You're gonna be like, yeah. "Get on the Peloton." Yeah. Yes, <laughs> oh, people can find me on social media at Dr. Jed Man. Two ends on Jed, two ends on Man. And right now, people cannot find you on the Peloton, but I'm working on it, and I'm. <laughs> So hopeful that week after week of us chatting that maybe I can get Tom to Keep do five away. minutes. That's literally can, her job. Yeah. A girl, a girl can help. I told you the first time we ever spoke, I'm not going to give up on Tom. <laughs> she, so did. she did. She did. Say that. A year later, Tom, five, but just five minutes, please, Tom. <laughs> and I was like, let's have her on the show weekly anyway. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, it is kind of odd that you agreed to that, yeah. to be honest. <laughs> yeah. Because deep down inside, there's a part of him that wants to start. I agree. That wants, Why that else? wants to rebel against his rebellion against his family history of having exercise pushed on him. Isn't rebelling against rebellion conformity? I'm spun around. <laughs> no, I think ultimately it is good self-care. It's figuring out what's in your best interest and following through regardless of any other people in your history who had their own agenda. She's so good. She is. You should do this for a living. <laughs> yes. I, uh... You know, I'll find that. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. And now I don't know how to wrap up because you already said where to find you. Yeah. So... <laughs> How about you can wrap up by being like, you know, this week I'm gonna try five a five minute class. Just five minutes. I think Tom. we just wrap up like uh like in an improv class and scene. <laughs> <laughs> And another new development, bike boot camps and tread boot camps have been separated. They have. They have. Uh, since day one of bike boot camps, people have been asking for it, and now it's happened. Uh, so it, it has its own category. You can go find it very easily now. However, we already have some issues because, uh -oh. you know, people are never happy. Sure. It's change, right? <laughs> But but they're they're legit questions that people have. Like, for example, if you already took the class, it no longer shows up as taken because oh, they okay. moved it into a new category. So now oh. that category didn't exist. So it's it's not flagged. anymore. Oh, okay. And frustrating. But I get it. The Apple Watch doesn't work on uh -oh. the bike boot camps. Anymore. That seems like a short term thing. I would think so. But I did have people bring up the fact that when you walk away from your bike, it ends anyway, like it disconnects. OK, so if you're. You're doing the bike boot camp. You jump off your bike to go to the floor to do the floor routine. If you get too far from your bike, it disconnects anyway. I don't know. Gotcha. Uh, you know, who, Peloton has not made a statement on it either way at this point. Doesn't mean that they won't. Doesn't mean that it's not going to get fixed. I'm just letting you know that's where people stand. So it's very exciting. And I want to point out that the bike boot camps are now live. They are live. That is brand new. They okay. were not taking live. They were all dropped on demand. So I think that that really shows how exciting how how much excitement people have for it absolutely so with the uh holidays just around the corner they're just around the corner you know they are so if you're wondering what to get for somebody who loves their peloton is looking for something a little different groove on we, groove on yeah it's a great addition to your bike and that's bike or bike plus you can get for either you can get a groove on for either one absolutely it works. and and so what it does is it allows you to change your resistance with just a click of a button and if you click it twice, then it goes up by five. Or no, 
<laughs> well, it's programmable. It's programmable. Right? So you can you can set it to go up by whatever increments you want. Yes. No decimal points. Don't be a jerk. <laughs> <laughs> but yes, you could you could make it be the seven. You could do the sevens, right? And, and you go up by sevens every right. time. And then you click another button and you go back down. And uh, I will say that. This is super helpful when you are out of the saddle, especially because uh, you can get you can get one that has a controller that you put on the end of your handlebar or you can put it down in your like second position or you can get the deluxe package that has both. And uh, it's awesome. My favorite is when you're out of the saddle, because when you're out of the saddle and uh, y- maybe I'm the only person this happens to, <laughs> but uh, I am not the most balanced individual I lose my balance. Watch it, Tom. I can tell. <laughs> I can tell you like, had all kinds of jokes hmm. going there. She just and, said uh, she's not balanced. <laughs> but when you reach down to like change, sometimes if you're going really fast, right? Uh, you know, you might kind of tilt a little bit. Sure. And uh, so being able to not move, be very steady, and just click a button. That's a game changer. And it's super helpful for people that love their power zones. Yes, it is perfect for power zone classes. I feel like it is made for power zone because you go to the same, uh, your same zones. And once you know you need to click it three times or whatever to go to the next zone, that's all you got to do. It's like uh, how you have a volume knob on your radio, but you also on the newer cars now, you've got the volume control right there on your steering wheel so you don't have to reach over. When's the last time you've touched the volume knob on your car? Never. On your actual... The head unit you, yeah you, you use the one on your steering wheel i have never in my new car that i've had for two years now i have never once touched now that. here's something i would be concerned about Uh-oh. like what if you're so used to that being the volume control oh no they play a song you like and you just start cranking up the <laughs> <laughs> the groove on <laughs> well then you're getting a better workout that is true it's really a win-win Tom. <laughs> like, i am exhausted <laughs> so this is a kickstarter that they've got going on right now and they have a limited number of discs Counted Groovons available. Yes, uh, so for clip out members only. For, for clip out listeners. So you want to head on over to getgroovon.com and and take advantage of that. Yes. And uh and like I said, maybe get it if if you have a loved one in your life that has a Peloton, you don't know what to get them. Here's a great item. Yep. Head it's on perfect. Over, head on over to getgroovon.com. Just a real quick point, the iPhone app now has the not taken by me option that the Android app got first. That's right. So Android app had its moment in the sun. That moment's now over. Android app still has the weights option that's filterable. And the iPhone does not have that yet. Well, the Android app had the weight option for a long time. <laughs> <laughs> You've been waiting for it to work right for years. Oh, my God. Seriously, you guys, you don't even know how nice the iPhone app is compared to the Android app. It is like it is like Android app lives in a third world country without water supply, indoor (laughs) water. That's how different it is. You guys just don't know. You don't know. I should post screenshots. So what you're saying is they don't know. They don't know. Okay. So Alex Toussaint was featured on uh, NFL something or other. The NFL kickoff on Fox. Okay. So it's like it's like the thing that kicks off NFL for the day on Sundays. Okay. And uh, and he was featured on it. Uh, so I guess at the beginning of every Sunday they have like this opening montage it's that they get you do. Pumped for some football. Yes. Okay. Yes. And and Alex got to be part of that this week. And uh, he basically like pumped them up about you know like get ready we're gonna do this we're gonna do that and. It was great. We actually had to figure out how to find football on a TV so you could watch it. Yeah, we did. You were like, who's we showing did. football? I'm like, I don't know. Yeah. And it's 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 Fox NFL. And Tom was like, probably on the Fox channel. And I was like, oh, yeah. I'm like, <laughs> I haven't followed, paid attention to football since the longest yard. The Burt Reynolds version. <laughs> oh, okay. not the Adam Sandler okay. version. Okay. I'm a purist. <laughs> of course you are. <laughs> uh, but this is awesome exposure for not only Peloton, but Alex Toussaint. And uh, I just want to say to all you guys who had... Ye of little faith, man. I posted the teaser about this and the Jen Sherman fans went ape shit. <laughs> they were very upset. They like <laughs> they just read into it like the worst possible thing so they could get mad. Everybody was very scared that Alex was taking over football rides because because Jen does the football rides and it's a thing and it hasn't been this year because it it's been a weird year. Right. But um never fear. Never fear, guys. It was just it was just a tiny little commercial and it was awesome. <laughs> Thank goodness. Peace has been restored in the JSS realm. (laughs) A couple quick Tune Day items. Yes. She was uh, signed by ICM. Yeah. 
So do you know much about ICM? I mean, it's a it's a big talent agency. I mean, I I, I book bands through them if when they'll return my phone calls. And uh, <laughs> but uh, but you could know, could you book Tune Day? Well, she's not a band. I know. So I don't really know. But maybe what I would, like just book her for the day for what me. I would sell tickets to. But oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> Got to pay for it. <laughs> right. But yeah, so they represent a lot of, you know, and most of these uh, agencies that rep bands also rep actors and actresses and models and just in just different realms. And a lot of times they'll try to package things together if they can or whatnot. But uh, but yeah, no. So I see them that they're a big deal. Well, that's that's awesome. She was also signed to a different agency not too long ago. So I find it interesting. Can you not sign? Can you sign to two things or was that like a different like like maybe one does appearances and one does voice because this mentions voice work specifically. Interesting. Um, So I, I don't know if like if they're for two different kind of purposes or what. But yeah, I thought if you if you had an agency like they kind of did all of that. So I'm not really entirely sure what to make of that. I don't know either. Yeah. Well. And then also uh, while we're on topic tune day uh, <laughs> she took over Vogue Beauty's Instagram last Friday yes and she talked all about uh, makeup tips and you know being the awesomeness that she is so very cool if you have not seen that definitely go back to Instagram and check it out it is worth watching of course I say that about everything tune day does because she's amazing <laughs> So then uh, Peloton this week uh, revealed some more of the Beyonce content that they're going to be rolling out. They did. And this time it's revolving around HBCUs, which for the uninitiated means historically black college or university. Yes. And and we kind of knew that this was all related because they talked about how homecoming was uh, Beyonce's homecoming. This was all homecoming. This was homecoming. Like they did all the uh, memberships to Peloton at right. the HBCUs. Yeah. So it's kind of all connected. It's this like kind of ongoing partnership that you're going to see. But the the other cool part about it is they created a two part series that's called HBCU at Heart. And um, it's it talks about um, the the actual partnership between Beyonce and Peloton. And it talks about the the historical black colleges and universities it talks about the homecoming there it's like all of this it kind of right. brings it together and um the other cool thing is that so chelsea jackson roberts uh is the one presenting this right. and then she was a spellman grad right uh which is uh, an hbcu correct and uh and i am super excited to announce she will be on this show in a couple of weeks yeah we're going to interview her in the next day or two and yes. you can look forward to that interview talking about her time at peloton and of course hbcus and their importance to her and uh that'll be coming up in the next probably two weeks maybe yeah i think two weeks yeah so we're gonna bring it all together so make sure and watch these videos before because by the time we get to the interview you're gonna kind of it'll be a nice round a full cycle of all the things, the Beyonce classes, yes. these these uh, the series, and then the interview to kind of round out the experience. Absolutely. So John Mills pointed out to us the Debug 2020 Summit is has a, has some Peloton content associated with it. So do you remember the Peloton Senior Vice President and Head of Global Marketing, Dara Traster? I do. Well, she is going to be speaking at the Lesbians Who Tech Conference. Uh, and it is going to be November 16th through the 20th. So the last day of it will be already happening. Um, she will be speaking at 4.45 p.m. Eastern on the 18th. So we post what? On the 20th? Correct. So people will have already missed it. But it's awesome that she has the ability to, um, the chance to be there. That's really cool. There's You can see all the other speakers. There's yeah, a it's of, a pretty impressive lot. Yeah. It's a lot of big names. There is. Yeah. yeah. It's a big deal. It's a big deal for one of the Peloton employees to be part of that and you can go check out their website because i i bet you a lot of that stuff is cataloged up that's there. a good point hey. i didn't think about that yeah i just assumed it was something you had to pay for and you know y- you know you only got your one chance to see it but you make a great point yeah. everything is digital right now because it's covid <laughs> touche and then jen sherman had an announcement she did she is launching a new signature series this sunday and uh <laughs> it is called cover to cover So for those of you who ride with Jen Sherman often, you might remember that uh, last year she did one that's called My Mixtape. And one of the uh, mixtapes that she did was all cover songs. Now, Jen is a very talented person when it comes to picking music. Yes. Uh, 
I feel like her cover mixtape was my favorite from last year Interesting. because it had some covers I had never heard of. There were covers I didn't even know was a thing. And uh, so Jen promised that this series will be taking it old school, you know, the favorites that everybody knows and loves. But also we're going to be learning some new new stuff, unexpected covers. So um, I, I love unexpected covers or covers that you wouldn't expect. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> What unexpected is ones that you wouldn't expect. It was just funny. Oh, okay, sorry. But like, like, <laughs> but I totally get what you're saying. I mean, like, <laughs> like, uh, like when a band you wouldn't think would cover a certain type of song. Yes. So, yes. Uh, like uh, the Eels have a version of Prince's "I Could Never Take the Place of Your Man." Oh, and it's so good. Really? So so good. So uh, I think of um, Johnny Cash doing Nine Inch Nails. Right. Like that's the unexpected one. Yeah. Or uh, his version of Rusty Cage by Soundgarden. That's really good too. Very good point. Yeah. Uh, so I'm looking forward to this. This is going to be a really cool series. So it starts this Sunday, 930 a.m. Eastern. And it's been a year in the making. Wow. A year. And then finally, Emma Lovewell. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Got a new house She did So apparently She kind of got kicked out of her Not kicked out Like she did something (laughs) wrong That sounds terrible Uh, She's a troublemaker (laughs) They were forced to leave Because of the 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 pandemic Like Her landlord wanted to renovate right? Right And then They were able to find Like a temporary rental But then in the mid that like all happened at the beginning of the pandemic so then they were kind of stuck in their temporary rental because gotcha. it just kept going yeah. and going and going and uh so when they got their rental it was outside the city now she's lived in new york city for 12 years and uh she never thought she would ever live outside the city but renting there they kind of had to start making some choices because you know renting is just not something that everybody wants to do forever right. so It was time and they found a house and it's outside the city. And uh, if you haven't seen this Instagram post, definitely go check it out because it is hilarious on the other two slides. Yeah, um, she's like they're tearing down a wall of renovating this house that they're closing in. And <laughs> and, uh, and then if you go to the next slide, um, she is using a leaf blower on her property, <laughs> and it's amazing. So uh, it's another. I love seeing instructors in their natural habitats totally. outside of the <laughs> outside of the studio. Um, but she's very excited about it. So wish her congratulations. You know, and I I know the instructors they're doing okay for themselves, and I know that they have connections in the world. But I hate to see them flaunt their connections and wealth this quite this way. Here she is pictured with toilet paper (laughs) it's so when the rest of us can't even find it she's like oh look at me just real casual in the back i've got toilet paper well look at you miss fancy pants you know what i bet that that was a welcome home gift it probably is there's the banner up yeah and there's there's a whole like there's a bunch of other stuff in there too and it's in their little farmer's market box i just thought it was funny with it Toilet paper getting hard to find again. I'm like, wow, look at the little show off. <laughs> <laughs> but congrats to Emma. That's Absolutely. awesome. Checking in with the Peloton community. So uh, joining us today via the magic of Zoom Tube is Paul Bradley. Hey, Paul, how's it going? I'm good. How are y'all doing? Good. Good. Have- good to see you. We haven't seen you since, gosh, two years ago, I guess, at the, not uh, obviously the, the homecoming did not happen this year. So the homecoming yeah. before that, I think, is the last time we saw you, right? Yeah. Wow. I think we uh, we probably ran into each other at the Beck concert. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, that yeah. sounds right. Gosh, it's been a while. That night's a little bit of a blur. <laughs> <laughs> totally. I think for many of the community, it, it probably is. <laughs> I just remember lights, sound. <laughs> Fireball. Yeah. <laughs> and right now, everybody would want to be back in that room together. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. That would be nice. Definitely. So. I miss that world. So, uh, Paul, tell us how you originally found Peloton. Okay. Well, um, it started actually December 2016. I started seeing some Peloton commercials and I started talking to Karen about it. And she's like, oh, yeah, I used to spend all the time. So we actually end up going to Austin and February 2017, and we went to the Austin showroom. So we're, we're up there. We're looking at the bike, trying it out. And, you know, I, I was thinking, okay, we, we'd go back home. Because Karen at that time, you know, she was very conservative on buying anything. And I'm like, okay, well, we'll make it. And Karen's like, no, I'll take it. 
<laughs> first thing. So we ended up getting it in March. So that's how we got started uh, Peloton. Now, I didn't start riding right away. Okay. I only took 11 rides that first year. Um, 11? 11. That sounds like a lot to me. That's <laughs> Well, yeah. yeah if... so I was kind of I was kind of like you, Tom, because my my first leaderboard name, well, probably my second was actually I ride my wife's bike. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, needless to say I had to change that, but uh, you know, it was uh it was pretty funny. And then, you know, I started working out at work. Uh, I did change jobs in 2017. I started working out at work and I started riding uh, a cheap bike at work and kind of got used to, you know, the seat and riding. And I told, I came home to a parent, I said, I think I want to ride now. So my first live ride was a 45 minute ride with Robin. And uh, Karen had posted a picture of me in the do epic t-shirt and kind of blew up uh, on Robin's page that day. So at some point, though, you you transitioned to running and you guys got a tread, too, right? Yes. You know, late in that year of, uh, of, you know, 2017, you know, I'm working out at, at the gym at work. And I said, you know, I, I started walking on the treadmill and I said, I wonder if I could run. And I had I had not ran in 25 years. Wow. Um, and so next thing I know, I ran three miles. It was like 26 minutes or so. And I felt really good. And I said, okay, I think I could run some more. So I started slowly progressing to running. And then January, I think 2018, Peloton announced they were coming out with the trend. The same day I changed my leaderboard name and pre-ordered the tread as soon as we could. And we got it in December 2018. What was nice uh, that your wife this time let you pretend to have input. Yeah, that's that was, true. Yeah. That's true. Yeah. <laughs> well, I, I bought the tread. She bought the bike. So. <laughs> my guess is, though, that like she probably just let you think you bought the tread. <laughs> Totally. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I feel like we'd be getting a different yeah. story from Karen. Oh, yeah. You'd be amazed how many leggings I own. <laughs> <laughs> it's <Yeah>. a lot. <laughs> I just got a bomber jacket in the mail today. It's a flight jacket and Sorry. it's gorgeous. You called it a bomber jacket. No, I compared it to my existing bomber jacket. See, he doesn't even listen. He doesn't even listen, Paul. <laughs> Even I know what it is. <laughs> <laughs> so um, you said you started exercising at work. Does that mean that you had previously been working out? You kind of had a lull. Were you always working out? What What is your background look like from a fitness standpoint? It, there, there wasn't one in the last 25 years. So I mean, that's a long time. It's a, it's a very long time. So, I, you know, I was in the military. I was in the Air Force. Once I got out... Um, you know, I, I'll be the first to tell you, I, I kind of struggled the first two years after I got out. Didn't know what I really wanted to do. And then I found the horticultural business. Um, so I've been doing that for uh, almost uh, 30 years now, pretty close to it. Um, and I really have found, you know, what I was meant to do in life, and that's to be in the landscaping the lawn, all of that um, business. So, well, I'm glad you clarified because when I hear someone say horticulture, I just assume you sell weed. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, no, don't get me wrong. If Texas ever, uh, <laughs> I, I probably will start my own growing operation. I'm not saying that I advocate that at all, but I do have a great green thumb uh, <laughs> on indoor and outdoor plants. So, uh, I've been able to grow many legal plants uh, <laughs> along the way. You're like, I don't have to grow anything in my basement. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Or, or have a high electricity bill. Right. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> Good to know. <laughs> That's great, though. Uh, I could probably use some advice because I Oh, I can't... thought you were going to say weed. <laughs> <No>. <laughs> 
Like, well, we'll talk after the show. This is a new, <laughs> a new piece of information. Go no, on. Just joking. No, but like Clip I out Cheech. That's what we're gonna start calling you. <laughs> I was just gonna say that like I cannot grow things like to save my life. Like I I am terrible at growing just about anything um and and so like the only thing that i've had any success with are those like those air plants because they require only air and (laughs) and a little misting every once in a while that's that's my kind of plant to take care of right there (laughs) she's so bad at growing things even her daughter is short hey what (laughs) then my mom was too because i'm short So was my mom. I was like, so stop. Yeah. <laughs> so we 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 mentioned you a couple of weeks ago because you had you recently had this grand adventure with the Moab 240. I'm really curious, like, what inspired you to do that? Like, how did you how did you land on that? Not like you know a short 50 miler or something. <laughs> I mean, <laughs> so it it really started. 20, 2018 and okay. Karen and I, we were watching a Spartan uh, World Championship on ESPN. All right, you know, because nowadays you can watch anything on TV. It's uh, true. Yeah. yeah, that is true. And so I kind of fell in love with uh, watching them uh, compete and, you know, all the different obstacles. I've always looked for challenges in my life. First thing I did was after that show, I, I looked for a Spartan race near me. I found out one was going to be in San Antonio in March of 2019, and I signed up. And so I get out there and I signed up in the age group, which was a now I look back, it was a bad decision because I was like the smallest guy out there, and I'm like surrounded by all these big fitness buffs and here I'm like with my you know dad vibe going on <laughs> and so for, um wait I, though for people who don't know uh what what is it what is what consists of a spartan race for people who may not know okay so this particular one was a spartan sprint race and it consisted of it was supposed to be three miles i think it ended up being six um and it had uh, 30 obstacles and I remember uh, Joe Gaviola telling me, don't get electrocuted, but that was a, a different type of race. Um, but, you know, they uh, they have different obstacles like walls, uh, bars, uh, you know, ropes you got to climb. And then if you don't complete an obstacle, uh, you have to do 30 burpees. No. So at the at the end of it, I had accumulated 180 burpees. So, oh. um, oh but God. I didn't finish last, which was <laughs> really good. Um, but I really enjoyed it, and I ended up doing three more Spartan races that year. Finished a trifecta, and uh, a trifecta in a Spartan race is where you do a Spartan sprint, a Spartan super, and then a Spartan beast. And each one of them graduates a little bit more difficulty. And by the Spartan Beast, I was really like into working out. And I completed that 13 mile, 30 plus obstacles with no burpees. Wow. Nice. Wow. That's incredible to go from having to having to do the burpees to completing the longest one without any. That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah, So, you know, so I started... And in between that, I did some 5Ks, a uh, couple 10Ks, and then, you know, ran some uh, half marathon. And then the the way the Moab 240 came about was Karen was following David Goggins on uh, last year's race. And so she's like, you got to look at this. And so, you know, I started tracking him, too. And... You know, I was like, wow, this looks like it would be like, you know, pretty intense. So I started looking it up and, you know, it just just kept eating at me. You know, I think I'd love to do this. And, you know, everybody that I told what I'd want to do this, they said, oh, you're crazy. Even Karen, the first thing she said, don't you want to do like a 50K first or something? I'm like, no, nah, I want to do this. <laughs> so... It took a little bit of coaxing from a friend of mine, Scott Compa, 
And so I mentioned it to him. He looked it up and, you know, that's all he and I talked about for a while. And so come January 2nd, when they opened up the sign up for it, he signed up and they sent me a picture and I was like, <laughs> what? And so I sent Karen a message like, I'm signing up. And she was like, okay. You know, I, I get to see the roll eye emoji coming after that. <laughs> so, so then I signed up and, you know, it, then the pandemic hit. So Right. And I wasn't sure if it was going to happen or not. Sure. Yeah. So many things have uh, gone away. It's been it's been a, a tumultuous year, to say the least. But like, is it 240 miles or 240 kilometers? It's 200. It's, it was actually 241 miles this year. They just thought so that was fun to add The in. majority of the racers uh, ended up going 241 that, that completed it. Um, I think uh, 60% uh, completed the race this year. So there were uh, 195 or 200. Um, and so about 130 people or so finished the race. Wow. So do you do what did you do any special training leading up to it or did you just keep doing what you've been doing? So, you know, I, I'm going to tell you, like when the pandemic hit, I was, you know, we, we were actually in New York City when it happened. Um, oh, my God. I remember I, that. You guys went like the weekend that everything shut down. And I was like yeah. worried about you guys. I was like, oh, I hope they get back. OK. <laughs> so if we, if we want to backtrack to that, we actually had a family meeting, me, Karen and Cora, and we talked about everything, the good, the bad, the ugly. If we went to New York City, we took family vote. I said, if one person votes, no, we're not going to go. Everybody wanted to go anyway. So, you know, looking back now. The, the fact that we made it to there and back, uh, I wouldn't change it for the world because we actually had the best time. Uh, we met a couple of friends up there, uh, Erica Dunmire and Tammy Haber, who was actually uh, on the feature last week or the week before. And me, Erica, and Tammy actually went ahead and ran from Brooklyn to Central Park. We did our New York City half marathon. Wow. wow. Nice. Wow. That's crazy. Yeah, we were supposed so, to go to Mexico like that the following weekend after yeah. and we and we bailed. We just Yeah. We were so worried we were going to get somehow Stuck separated from the kids, yeah. not be able to get back. That was just a really a really scary time. And yeah. also we were just afraid we wouldn't enjoy ourselves because we'd be worried right. about what would happen. You know, but you guys were all together and you were in the country. Right. So that made that a little less dicey. So I, I could see us making that decision if it had totally. been in like, the country. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. It was yeah. just the uh, if your worst case scenario, you rent a car. Right. And come exactly. and drive back, you know, even if it is for us halfway across the country. Like it's yeah, it sucked, it, but we could do it. But be a longer drive for them because they live in Texas. They oh, would have okay. had to go yeah, yeah, yeah. further. But, but uh, yeah, but yeah, but to go to Mexico, like to leave the country, it's not about Mexico. It's about right. being outside of the country, and then you know, because especially at the time, there's all the talk about shutting down the borders, and it was right. just like, uh oh. <laughs> but back to your yes, back, back to, to your Moab. Moab. <laughs> yeah. So. So so you know I I got up to two hundred nine pounds uh, because I became the quarantine bake man. I was cooking cookies, uh, brownies, all this. I was cooking stuff on the grill. I was experimenting and, you know, I was just trying different stuff. And so. So yeah. just to recap, you don't grow weed, but you're the bake man. That's right. Yeah. Making brownies. Yeah. Making cookies. What was in those brownies, Paul? Okay. I mean, okay. I got the munchies. on Robert Gates because, uh. Cause, uh he uh, he's the brownie guy, um, and then I'm like, I need a I need a quarantine name, and I'm like quarantine bake man. So, <laughs> you know, so I I transitioned from that pretty quickly because uh, Karen's like, you got to stop doing this. So, <laughs> so um, but between uh, as, when I quit that, um, I started feeling a pain. Because I, uh, you know, I wanted to start writing again. I started feeling a pain in my right Achilles tendon, and so I went to my orthopedic doc, and he diagnosed me at that time with uh, 
Achilles tendonitis. Mm. So he put me in a boot for six weeks. And so he would, he said I could ride the bike, but I couldn't run. So, um, so I started riding, I'd, I'd wear the boot all day, get home and I'd ride a little bit. Um, I wasn't doing like crazy stuff, even though Karen will say I was, uh, cause you know, when I get on the bike, I want to go for a PR every time. It's just like competitive nature of myself. <laughs> um, but then, you know, once I, once I got out of the boot, I was like, okay, I can start riding. So I started off gradually and I didn't follow anybody's training program. I just knew what I needed to do. So I started doing some trail running and I started running a lot in the neighborhood and I got to where I'd run from four, six to eight hours at a time. And, you know, I do a walk run. Um, so I wasn't like just trying to run for eight hours. I was trying to kind of, uh, prepare myself because I knew there was some steep hills and things like that there that I was going to have to walk up. So uh, isn't that the David Goggins method? Yes. And, but see, he, he's able to run strictly on dirt roads and and sand. There ain't a lot of that here, uh, except at the trails um, at government Canyon. And yeah, I did some runs out there, uh, but you know, it's funny. The very first time I went out there to run uh, the trail, I had my pack on and everything. And within the first mile, I fall. What? I, yeah, I fell. And I, I caught myself with my hand. And I, I, I laid there for a minute. And I was like, okay, nothing's broke. I looked around. Nothing's broke. Nothing's bleeding. And so I stood up. I was like, okay, focus the rest of the way. And so... I was able to keep going after that. So I did some good trail runs there, some good trail runs uh, in a different part of San Antonio. But the majority of it, I would run on these hills in our neighborhood. And, um, yeah, I'd get up 3, 4 in the morning and just go out running. And you know, I would come, come back home about halfway, change clothes, go back out again. Um, Karen was a big support once I started running and she saw me putting in the effort that's when she really started planning our Moab trip she she hadn't did anything up until <laughs> seeing me prepare for it because she didn't know if it was going to happen sure or yeah I, I get, get that, that. <laughs> so so how does that work is it like our because it's such a long amount of time to run so you're just supposed to run that straight through there's no breaks or sleeping no no <laughs> naps can so each and this is what actually uh this how i got out of the race was you have 15 eight stations along the way and you have a certain time frame to hit those eight stations by and so um i had to hit mile 57.3 by 6 a.m the next morning i got there at 7 a.m mm. so um i missed the the cut off by one hour but a lot of that was uh due to um when i was running it was about mile 40 um i turned my foot on a rock i didn't fall but i bent one of my uh, trekking poles that helped save me from falling down but when i did i felt this really sharp pain in the back of my achilles so i sat down i just really started massaging working on it the sweepers start coming by uh, and they make you get up and uh, walk if you can. So I, I got up, I started walking around, and uh, I'm like, okay, I can walk on it. So we started walking together. Then we came upon this guy that had blisters all on the bottom of his feet. And oh, my God. Like, well, this guy, they're going to take forever. And so I, at that time, I looked at my watch. It was about 2.30 in the morning, and I had about 14 miles to go so three and a half hours and i said i wonder if i can make it so i took off light light run but you know the, the light i had is not wasn't the ideal light if i could do it all over again i would have spent the 300 dollars on the, the gala light because it projects a different uh light for the area instead of just a you know direct 
And, um, you know, so I'm running, walking. I thought I was going to make it but five miles to go. I ran out of water. So I had to do the last five miles with no water. Yikes. By the time I uh, reached Breaking Bad aid station, I was broken. So (laughs) I was, uh, you know, I I get there and uh, the only food they had left was a couple pieces of bacon, uh, some Oreos and some M&Ms. So that was that was what I got to eat until I met up with Karen later. Oh, my gosh. So then like just. Like, where are you at in the world at that point? Like, you're, you know, because you're about, what's the math on that? About a fourth of the way through, a third of the way through? I'm sorry. Yeah, I'm not great at math either. I'm a math com major, so. Yeah. (laughs) But uh, do they, like, have a car that will get you somewhere, or what what happens? So this was uh, was one one of the really remote locations. Mm -hmm. It was about a two-hour drive. So it's a 17-mile dirt road that you go down. And so they, they had to call in. It was eight of us at this aid station that had to be picked up. And so they sent a truck out that could hold really uh, four people in it. Um, you know, and a Destination Trail did an excellent job on uh, the COVID and everything. Uh, anytime you're in the aid stations, you have to wear a mask. You're in a vehicle, wear a mask. So they, they, really plan this out uh really good to uh protect us and protect their uh employees and volunteers so we you know we end up going uh to the next aid station which was indian creek uh we turned in our trackers at that point um and to uh actually uh, the leader of that aid station this year was mike mcknight so i got to meet him he was the winner of it last year oh wow that's cool Um, so he set he set the record men's record last year so he's a really great guy and so then from there it was a it was a two-hour drive back to um the cabins where we're staying at which stayed at uh where they actually held the event at the moab rv campground so it's really nice there so what was it like compared to what you thought it was going to be uh it was to me so the first the first seven miles you know first three miles it was all just uh paved road um you go through the city of moab uh really like a residential area and then you hit the trails uh and i think i had posted a couple videos of me running and it was just kind of a up and down uh trail wasn't really nothing uh like challenging at that point and then you hit that first uh aid aid station it was about eight miles nine miles and then from there it was or it was actually eight miles and then from there it was like straight up a mountain but you're like zigzagging up this mountain and I remember because at mile nine is when David Goggins passed me. Uh, and I stepped to the side and let him and his little crew go. And <laughs> it was to stay hard. So he's like, right on. Uh, <laughs> That's pretty but, cool. Uh, that part was, uh, I felt like was the, the most difficult, except for night running. Uh, because, you know, my short legs, there were some of those rocks that I'm having to use my hands to uh, pull myself up on so oh wow but, so you were kind of climbing I really sometimes enjoyed it. do you think you enjoyed the um like because it doesn't sound like a typical run so when you say you enjoyed it like i i hear i'm wondering if you enjoyed it similar to how you enjoyed all those obstacles that you did on the spartan yes, races absolutely now the the other part was during this whole training i i really fell in love with just running okay um, i know some people that's hard to believe but um for me you know i i just enjoy the time out there by myself and just you know challenging myself uh but you know once i got to the top of that that first mountain um you know i look back and i see the whole city of moab at that point and you know i felt like i accomplished something really great at that point and then, you know, I look up and there's this, you know, it's like a prairie, uh, just grasslands. And you run through that. 
Um, and then you start hitting like slick rock and, and the whole time you're just, you're in awe. Like for me, because I had never seen stuff like that. Karen and I went to Grand Canyon, um, many, many years ago, but, um, this was a little bit different. Uh, I guess now that, you know, 2020 hit, you can really appreciate these adventures that you are able to take. So. I soaked it in. I took many pictures, um, and you know, just kept moving, moving forward. And I finally saw them carrying a core at mile seventeen point nine or something like that. Changed my socks, uh, changed uh, my shirt. Uh, actually, lubed up my feet because uh, I had three small blisters at the end of my toes at that point because I ran. It felt like a 90 degree uh, incline or, you know, a, a sharper incline that I was running down and my toes just kept hitting the bottoms of my, or the, you know, my shoes and it wore some blisters. And then, um, you know, when, when I stopped at that next aid station, I put this run goo all over my feet and I never had another problem over those 57 miles. Wow. I mean, that's amazing. That's a, that's a testament. Yeah. 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 <laughs> Especially so, after what I saw in yeah, mine when I did yeah, my, no my little marathon on the treadmill. Yeah. My tiny little marathon. <laughs> but yeah, it, a mar- it, it's still, to me, a marathon is a really special moment. You know, and I mean, you, you shared it this year. Um, Alon uh, Nigger, he ran his today, you know, his New York City virtual. And I was tracking him the whole time. I think he was right before we got on. He was a little over five hours over. Um, wow! It's a uh, to me, uh, you know, it's you. You can say that you've done that. That is true. Yeah, absolutely. True. So do you? Uh, so do you think you'll give it another shot or no dice? So I really thought about it. Um, yeah, I know what I said after the <laughs> the the race. Um, but I created a GoFundMe, and it's Make Paul Run Moab in 2021. Yes. So I want to do it again. You know, that's why I created the uh, GoFundMe, because if I told Karen I wanted to run again, she'd probably stab me or something. <laughs> I get that. I get that. <laughs> so, um, you know, last year I did a fundraiser uh, for uh, MMRF for the – uh, New York City Half Marathon. Um, so I figured what I'd do with this would be to pay for the cost of my um, entry fee and any associated uh, uh, money left over. Uh, I would donate it to the United Way of San Antonio. Oh, that's fabulous. That's, awesome. that's yeah. really great. Totally. I bet that's an expensive venture between the travel and the entry fee and just getting there and all your supplies that you need. I bet it's I bet it's not an inexpensive thing. It it, it is a very expensive uh, journey. Um, you know, it's one of the it for me it was uh, probably the best journey I've ever decided to embark on. Um, definitely the most expensive, you know, and equipment wise, I probably only need a few other things to make 2021 better than 2020, you know, but the airline and things like that, it, I would relate that kind of like a New York city trip. And we've, we've taken five of those, like you and I, we can relate uh, on our New York city trips, like the people that live up in Connecticut, Pennsylvania, right. They can't relate to our uh, travel uh, expenses because they can just take the train up there. Right. Right. And they can be there like in an hour or two versus yeah. like it's an all day event right. when we go. <laughs> exactly. And, and and we're exhausted by the time we get there. and Everybody's like, let's go out and party. And we're like, what? <laughs> and then we do. But, yeah. <laughs> but that's that's all you do there. Uh, yep. You know, you hang out with friends. So, you, you know, if I, I look back and if somebody was to ask me what really got you started on this journey and Karen and I, we were talking about that. And, you know, there's so many people within the, the Peloton community that have uh, fought 
uh, different diseases, you know, cancer, uh, life changing things uh, where they lost loved ones and things like that. And those people were, were the people that really inspired us because Karen and I, we, we, we didn't do anything. We'd go to work, we'd come home, we'd hang out, watch TV. Once we got our Peloton and really got involved in the community, she was there in the community over a year before I was. And she started, uh, you know, conversations with different people and learning all of these different stories, you know, and, that's what really inspired us to go on our adventures, you know, and say yes to this, say yes to that. I mean, she hasn't told me no on any of my crazy adventures. Um, and, you know, I, I love this, this girl and, uh, you know, she's been there to support me. We both support each other. Um, you know, I'm not a big planner, but last year I surprised her and sent her up to New York city with, uh, uh, Oliver's treadmates, uh, so she could hang out with her friends. So, um, luckily she ended up in New York city and not New Jersey or something. <laughs> <laughs> totally. So I guess as we're circling back to Peloton, do you have any advice for people who are just now getting a bike and or a tread? I would say, you know, uh, first thing, get involved in the community, you know, get to know who you're riding with, you know, you're, you're going to find your people. Um, you know, I, the, the people I found that I really enjoyed the most was the original, uh, JJ's crew, you know, that was, you know, admin by Billy, Tracy and Lisa. And, you know, they were able to bring so many people together and, you know, those, the, that core group of people that I met through there really helped me to meet other people. And I would say the more you get involved in the community and riders uh, or the instructors that you like, the more you are to stay in it and enjoy it. I think that's great advice. And I totally agree. I, I have never felt so much that the the saying is true that I do with Peloton, that the more you put in, the more you get out. And uh, I just feel like the Peloton people are are my people, and I love that 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 Peloton has led me personally on so many crazy adventures. So I totally get what you are saying. There's so many things that I never would have tried, never would have done had it not been for Peloton. It has been like this. Yeah, this this <laughs> this conversation would not be taking place if it hadn't been for Peloton. I wouldn't we wouldn't have a podcast. We, I wouldn't have a bike. I wouldn't. All the things. So, and I wouldn't know you. I wouldn't know you. And I love yeah. talking to you and Karen. And uh, you guys have always been great to us. And, and we really appreciate that. So I think that's great advice to get to know the community. And I would say, you know, especially with this year, uh, because, you know, last year I did 21 races. And it, especially now more than ever, say yes to an adventure. Don't, don't start when you're ready. You know, I got that on a pair of Rome Peloton shorts. I look and it says, don't start when you're ready or something like that. And, you know, start now. Um, you know, I think you can plan uh, trips. You can plan adventures. Uh, even during this crisis that we're the whole world's facing right now. And still, you know, do stuff for yourself because that's, that's what's going to help people go in and, and really enjoy their lives. Excellent Ab- advice. Absolutely. So what is uh, what is your leaderboard name? Just Tread It. <laughs> so, uh, you know, what, once they announced the tread, uh, I changed it that day. And that's just my leaderboard name. So I, <laughs> I won't change it again uh, unless some life-changing thing happens. Uh, but that's just, that's just who people know me. And it's, uh, I, I love it. So I want to I want to go back for just one second on you were talking about the lamp and how your headlamp when your Moab trip. I'm curious because I'm a gear nerd now that I've found Mm -hmm. Peloton and I'm curious why just a regular headlamp wouldn't work. Is it because there's too many shadows and stuff and like you needed one that was like more wide angle or is there something totally different? Yeah. So. All right. So first thing is I changed batteries. Um 
six times, I think it was. Whoa. Um, in 57 miles? Uh, no, in 17 miles. Okay, Whoa. yeah, that's too many. So, and the, the Kagala lights, um, I hate to like try and do an advertisement. For them. <laughs> you know, uh, it's a belt light. It goes around, it's around your waist and it has a rechargeable battery pack that comes with it. Uh, and it projects a wide amount uh, of light instead of, you know, when you're right there. Uh, I mean, I probably saw four to six feet in front of me. Um, I think it, I saw some couches and stuff at night because uh, they say you see hallucinations uh, at night in the desert. Um, really? Yeah, I definitely didn't want to go sit on them. Well, there are probably that's, some cactus. That's yeah. good. That's for the best, I think. If you see a random couch in the middle of the desert, it's... It's a trap. It's a trap. Yeah. <laughs> Don't believe it. <laughs> I think that so, means you were tired and you wanted to sit on a couch. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So if, if I could add one thing about the whole Moab 240 experience was, you know, I said I ran 21 races last year. This was the first race I ever ran uh, for uh, Destination Trail. And I would have to say the uh, race director, Candace Burt, she put on an absolute fantastic race uh, from the planning um, to execution, everything, uh, especially during, uh, you know, the COVID, they, they, all the things that they made her change to be able to make this race happen. Um, and it was the very first race um, that I probably ever started on time. Um, <laughs> you know, and I mean, it was like five, four, three, two, one, go. Um, you know, if, if you want to follow somebody on social media and get some good trail running advice, uh, run Candace run. Um, and so she, uh, she does some really great runs out. You know, she puts on three great races. Um, I'm definitely not doing those, but I would <laughs> like to repeat the Moab 240. And hopefully Scott Compa will go with me this time. <laughs> he didn't go after he signed up. He didn't go. I thought I just no, assumed he, he went. He had he had some hip issues, um, so hopefully he's doing some great rehab, and um, you know he'll be able to join me in in twenty twenty one. Okay, awesome. that's that's great. So uh, before we go, where can people find you on social media if you would like to be found? Um, on Facebook, I'm just Paul Bradley, um, and then Instagram. E. Bradley 007. Awesome. Well, thank you so much for taking time out of your day to join us. And I'm glad you're up and moving. I can't even imagine 57 miles. Like, I know that's not <laughs> even the whole thing, but sweet baby snow peas. I mean, it's that's a huge a accomplishment. Yeah. It's an amazing yeah. feat. 57 miles is no joke. Yeah. <laughs> well, Lord. I appreciate it. I actually didn't have any soreness in my legs. What? Um, what? I, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm not even joking. The only soreness is in my Achilles tendon, um, and I go back to the doctor on November 3rd, um, so hopefully uh, we can figure out what's going on and, and uh, get it repaired or rehab for next year, but, uh, you know, I, I put my legs through some good training, and, you know, if you do that, you'll see the results. Well, that's awesome. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you so much for taking time to join us today. We really appreciate oh, it. Thank yes. you. Thank you. So I guess that brings this episode to a close. What, pray tell, do you have in store for people next week? It depends. Fair enough. Well, thanks for tuning in. Bye. <laughs> yeah, we're either going to be we have we have two amazing options depending right. on how editing goes. If the editing goes well and quickly uh, and smoothly, then we will we will have Chelsea Jackson Roberts on. OK, if it takes a little longer than expected. Sure. And I'm sure it would be our fault that right. it did. Um, <laughs> then it would be Jeff Perlman, who is 
a sports writer. A sports writer used to write for Sports Illustrated. He's written uh, quite a few books, yeah. and uh, and and he was a fun talk. So and a very very fun guy. Yeah. So you guys have two great options coming your way. So until <laughs> then, where can people find you? People can find me at facebook.com slash crystal O'Keefe. They can find me at Instagram, Twitter, the bike, and of course the tread at Clip Out Crystal. And you can find me on Twitter at Roger Kubert or on Facebook at facebook.com slash Tom O'Keefe. You can find the show online facebook.com slash the Clip Out. <laughs> that was she our. Hit her head. A dog hit her head on the table. That was the the conk you heard. And now you see her trying to lick Crystal's face. So if you've never gone to our YouTube channel, here's a chance to see our dog lick Clip Out Crystal. So you can also find the show online, facebook.com slash the clip out. While you're there, like the page, join the group. And of course, sign up for our newsletter at theclipout.com and see our dog at youtube.com slash the clip out. So that's it for this one. Thanks for tuning in. And until next time, Keep pedaling. And running.